Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I'm Dr. Derek De Silva. It's a pleasure to have you with us here today. Joining me today is Dr. Eugene Shippen. Dr. Shippen is from Reading, Pennsylvania, and he is a family practice doctor in medical practice since 1973. Uh, family practice for the first 25 years with a strong concentration in endocrinology. You're also the author of the book, The Testosterone Syndrome, that was published in 1998. So tell me a little bit of how you go from Family practice, and you also just told me that uh, you've delivered a lot of babies. From family practice to delivering babies to endocrinology and now hormones. Take me through that evolution. Uh, I started in family practice, and in the days and in the 70s, the family practitioner did everything. So I took a rotating internship, which had three months of OBGYN, and that allowed me to do... Uh, deliveries when I got into practice uh, in my first year with the support of, of the specialist, of course. So that was my training. Uh, and in those days, you get board certification after two years of practice if you did CME and took the boards, which I did. Uh, I did general family practice, and I loved it. And I loved the OBGYN, which gave me a big, uh, a big exposure to women's health. Uh, at age 50, I heard a lecture on the male menopause by a foreign doctor. A foreign doctor. Which we call andropause. Yes, right? he, it, was a, it was, it was a, a lecture on andropause, which of course we were taught didn't exist. Right, right. And he was listing off the symptoms, you know, weight gain, tiredness, low libido, being a couch potato, feeling burnt out, maybe even a little depression. Uh, I'm listening to the lecture and I'm saying, one, two, three, four, I got it. So I got I, all of those. So I, I did a testosterone level, I'm 190, which wow. is clearly low. Right. So not knowing anything about testosterone, I did what the usual treatment is. I did, started having my wife giving me a shot in the butt every two weeks of testosterone cypionate. And boom. My vitality came back, my libido came back, my golf game got better. My and that's an important piece, by the way, is your, your golf game. Absolutely. Physical capacity yes. and, and athletic ability, or if you're a runner, or if you, if you like sports, uh, that declines when testosterone mm -hmm. goes down. Your athletic ability is clearly affected. And I didn't like what I was seeing. I'm thinking, if, if I'm at 50 and I'm feeling tired, worn out, gaining weight, looking old, not interested in my wife to the same degree that I did before, no ED, nothing, nothing to set it apart. But when I saw the 190 and then went on testosterone, I had this phenomenal transformation in my health. So I started checking my patients, and lo and behold, guys over 40, I'm finding low testosterone in a lot of guys, so I'm putting them on treatment. So let me stop you there. The testosterone syndrome, 1998, you were way ahead of your time. You, what is the focus there? Is it using supplements? Is it using lifestyle? What is it that you are, what you like that you do to enhance, can you, do you mind me saying enhance testosterone naturally? Is there such a thing? Uh, there is, and the, the learning curve for somebody that, at, at that time, nobody's teaching. Nobody is teaching even basic endocrinology, more than a little diabetes and thyroid. So the average family doctor internal medicine doesn't get any male endocrinology, even any female endocrinology. Um, I started, I'm, I, I'm a Medline maverick. I, I love Medline. I had my little Mac, I had my disc, so I could go search Medline back to 166. And so I started looking up all the articles on testosterone. And there's a world, wealth of information out there. And I started to learn about uh, different forms of testosterone. For example, chorionic gonadotrophin, which has been around for eons, mm -hmm is natural LH, which is what goes down in men as they get older. It's suppressed with age, stress, uh, chemicals in the environment. So I started using uh, chorionic gonadotrophin as a substitute for giving testosterone replacement. It worked very well uh, for many of the men. And then I learned about clomiphene, a, a fertility drug 
that fools the brain into releasing more LH. And lo and behold, I would do a clomiphene test, and if the male had a great response, I knew his pituitary was working, I knew his testicles were working, they just weren't getting the signaling. Right. And so I started to add more and more modalities to raise testosterone. If those failed, then I would go to replacement. I see. Um, so it was a slow process. As I got a lot of experience, uh, a writer uh, came to me and said, uh, I was looking for somebody interested in testosterone, so uh, I called up Women's International Pharmacy. And they said, well, you better talk to Dr. Shippen. He writes for more prescriptions for testosterone than anyone in the country. I said, I do. I'm just a little family doc. Uh -huh. And uh, so we did interviews, and then uh, that's how the was the, the night is for the book. I said, I got all this information and case histories. So what's the secret? What is the secret? Is there a secret with raising your testosterone? And we're talking about, you're, you were specifically talking about men, correct? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about that. What is your quote-unquote secret that you like to raise testosterone in men? Well, the secret of good medicine, as we're learning today, is that the population is diversely different genetically. And so the normal range for testosterone or estrogen in females or any of the hormones are highly variant because of your genetics, your history, your lifestyle. And so what I was learning was that there was no golden level that puts you back at age 18 and you're gonna, you're gonna feel like an 18 year old. Levels that were too high are suppressive actually. They actually uh, may uh, end up with too much estrogen conversion and that dampens the libido. And so I started to find that I had to individualize the care and find that golden mean for my patients. So individualization came, came with experience. And what about diet, lifestyle? Could you, could we're, we're running, into the, uh, running into some time issues here. So give me a couple of tidbits that men can follow. First and foremost, we've got obesity. Everybody knows that that is. Your obese cells convert more testosterone into estrogen. Estrogen suppresses the uh, pituitary production for testosterone. So lose weight. Lose weight. Get on a low carb diet. Almost all of the guys that have Syndrome X mm -hmm. are low testosterone and they've shown that preceding Syndrome X is low testosterone. Uh, so diet, getting the diet changed, cleaning it up, and then chemicals in the environment we don't have control over, but these chemicals are estrogenic and they're also suppressing the, uh, the pituitary. So we're finding the population levels of testosterone over the last 20 years in our population are dropping at every age group. So we're seeing more and more low testosterone from environmental factors and lifestyle factors. We're becoming more sedentary, more obese, and more chemicals. So the book is, is called The Testosterone Syndrome? Yes. Still available? You know, I published it in 1998. I don't know any testosterone books that are still in print, really, but you can still get it on Amazon. It's still uh, a popular seller. And uh, the interesting thing about the book is the, the f I'm the first book that mentioned estrogen in men because we're not looking just at testosterone. We're finding if you're doing testosterone replacement therapy, you have to look at all the hormones, including estrogen. Estrogen, Excellent. very important in men, but also very important if it's too, too high. Mm -hmm. Too high or too low, you run into problems. Dr. Eugene Shippen from Reading, Pennsylvania. He's the author of the book, The Testosterone Syndrome. Thank you very much for joining me. Pleasure to have you with us. And folks, thank you for so, so much for spending some time with us. Until next time, I'm Dr. Derek DeSilva. And may you always be blessed with good health. <laughs>